Hello, everyone. Welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. In this particular segment, we're going to be looking at how to prepare for the Keem exam, which is Kerala Engineering Architecture Medical Exam. Now, this is a very important exam if you want to enter into uh, a job. So, therefore, uh, it is quite difficult for some, and therefore, we're here to fast track your way into this exam. So, today, what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at some questions asked in previous episodes, previous editions of this exam, and then try to solve them for you so that you can get a feel of how the exam is going to look like. So, for this particular uh, set of videos, we're going to be looking at each subject and each chapter in detail. So, to start things off, we're going to be looking at chemistry and the first, you know, concept uh, which deals with basic concepts of chemistry as well as atomic structure. So, let's kick things off with a beautiful question. Now, let's look at this question. Irrespective of the source, a pure sample of water always yields 88.89% mass of oxygen and 11.11% mass of hydrogen. This is explained by the law of conservation of mass, constant, constant composition, multiple proportion, constant volume, Gay-Lussac. So how do we solve this question? Well, in order to solve this question, we need to understand the laws that are given in the options. Now, what about option A? It says conservation of mass. So what's the law of conservation of mass states? It states that mass cannot be created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. And does that help in giving us this statement in the question? No, it does not. So option A is incorrect. What about option E? Gay-Lussac's law. Well, technically, Gay-Lussac's law and con the law of constant volume states that volume is proportional to temperature when pressure is constant. So again, this doesn't help in explaining the statement here. So options D and E are incorrect. What about option C? multiple proportion. Well, the law of multiple proportion states that if two elements form more than one compound, then the ratio of masses of the second element, which combined with the fixed mass of the first element, would be ratios of small whole numbers. In order to explain this, if we take <clears throat> nitrogen dioxide and nitrogen oxide, you can see that the mass of nitrogen would be the same because there's only one atom of nitrogen. However, the mass of oxygen would differ. We have two atoms of oxygen versus one atom of oxygen. So as you can see, the ratio here is of small whole numbers. That is what the law of multiple proportion explains. However, the law of multiple proportion involves more than one compound. So option C is incorrect. The right answer is option B, constant composition. The law of con constant composition states that chemical compounds made out of elements are present in a fixed ratio by mass. So if you were to take water from the sea or water from the river, it always yields 88.89% mass of oxygen and 11.11% mass of hydrogen. So option B is the correct option here. Let's look at this question. 32 grams of oxygen, 2 grams of hydrogen, and 28 grams of nitrogen at standard temperature and pressure occupy separately a volume of 1 liter, 2 liter, 22.4 liters, 2.24 liters, 0 0.224 liters. Now, in order to solve this question, we need to calculate the volume of all the three samples separately. So we have 32 gram oxygen, 2 grams of hydrogen, and 28 grams of nitrogen. 
However, we can make our calculations simpler by using the mole concept again. Now remember, oxygen atom has a mass of 16. So two oxygen atoms would have a mass of 32. So therefore, the number of moles here is one mole. Similarly, hydrogen as an atom would have a mass of one. So two hydrogen atoms would have a mass of two grams. I mean, two, a mole of two hydrogen atoms would have a mass of two grams. So therefore, again, one mole. Nitrogen, a mole of nitrogen atoms would have a mass of 14. So a mole of nitrogen gas, which has two nitrogen atoms per molecule, would have a mass of, again, 28 grams. So again, one mole. So as you can see, all of these samples have a common number of molecules, which is one mole. Now remember, we can calculate the mole concept using volume. So using the moles, using the number of moles, we can calculate volume as well. Now remember, in our previous question, we said that one mole of anything would occupy 22,400 milliliters of space. So if we were to divide that by 1000, we would get 22.4 liters. And that is the answer that we are looking for. So option C, 22.4 liters is the correct answer. 2.24 would be incorrect because it is divided by 10,000. 0.224 would be divided by 100,000. So again, incorrect. And one liters and two liters, again, is not correct when it comes to the mole concept. So mole concept is a very important concept and I urge that everyone, uh, I urge that you revise it as much as you can because there are a lot of questions that re require converting uh, mass into moles, number of molecules into moles and also volume into moles as well. So let's look at another question. The standard adopted for the determination of atomic weight of elements is based on H1, C12, O16, S32, Cl35. Now, in chemistry, when we look at atomic weight as a concept, we use the unit AMU, which is atomic mass unit. This unit has been uh, rewritten as unified mass. So one AMU or one unified mass unit would be equal to one twelfth of the mass of a carbon 12 atom. So therefore, the determination of atomic weight is based on option B, carbon 12. Now this is something which is a dry fact and so therefore it's a good idea to keep it in your head. It's very important because we will be using um, the atomic mass in its gram form in order to calculate the uh, mass of one mole of an element or one mole of a molecule containing the elements. So therefore again the idea that it's based on C12 is again very important. So option B is the correct option. H1 refers to hydrogen, O16 is oxygen, S is sulfur, Cl is chlorine. Again, all of these are elements. However, the element that is that bases the determination of atomic weight is carbon and in its most stable isotope, which is carbon-12. Next question. The law of multiple proportion is illustrated by one of the following pairs. Now, the, we have pairs here given in the, in the options. But in order to understand the question, we need to look at what is the law of multiple proportion. So let's write it down. If two elements form more than one compound, then the ratio of masses of the second element 
which combine with fixed mass of the first element will be ratios of small whole numbers. So again, in these, um, what we say, options, we need to find the pair where you have two elements in both compounds. However, their composition is different. If we look at option A, it says H2S and SO2, which is incorrect because one um, compound has hydrogen, the other has oxygen, so which is incorrect. If we look at option B, <clears throat> It says NH3 and NO2. Again, nitrogen is common. However, we have H3 on one end and O2 on the other, which is incorrect. If we look at option E, it says H2O and H2S. Again, oxygen and sulfur are different. So therefore, option E is also incorrect. If we look at option C, it says BEO and BeCl2. Oxygen, chlorine, two chlorine atoms, that's different. So option C is incorrect. The only option that is correct is N2O and NO. Now here we have one oxygen atom in both elements, I mean in both compounds. So we have fixed mass of one element. The other element, which is nitrogen, has variable mass. However, if we look at the ratio of those masses, it will be two is to one, which is ratio of small whole numbers. So option D is the correct option among the following in this question. That concludes this episode of Cream Crash Course. Now, we at Agile Rankmate focus on providing carefully curated content. So we would like you to use our content for your various purposes. After all, our aim is to provide top quality content for education. So, as you leave this video, please don't forget to show your support by subscribing to our channel. You can also like the video if you've enjoyed it, and you can share it to all of your peers if you find it useful. Also, you can comment on the various aspects of the video. What did you like? What could be improved? What can be done to, you know, spread it more? So, you can always give your feedback in the comments section down below. Again, if you are subscribing and you want to get notifications about our videos, then please hit the bell icon. Again, that's present below the video. So, until the next episode, take care, stay safe, ta-ta for now.